We are recording and live streaming. I'm going to say some things to try to test the caption. So I'm just saying some things like we are live and I'll stop now. Morning, Shana. Morning. Uh, and the captions are working, so great. Awesome. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Employee Forum August monthly meeting. Before we get started, uh, and we do have a, a very packed agenda today, I wanted to take a moment and, and just say a couple of things to, to our amazing staff across campus. This is probably one of the most difficult work experiences I've ever had. And I'm sure some of you are feeling the same way. The teamwork I'm seeing across campus is amazing. I couldn't ask to be in a better place at this time in the world. I see fearless leadership and constant devotion almost everywhere I turn. 
It's also important to please reach out. It is okay to say that you're having trouble. It is okay to say that you need help, both with physical tasks and with your emotional health. This has been very difficult, and I believe that it will continue to be difficult. And so if we are honest with each other and we reach out and continue to support each other, we will get through this. So with that, please, if you, are, if you need any help for any reason, please reach out to your forum. We'll help direct you um, to some resources if that's what you need, or we'll just be there and listen. So thank you once again for joining in today. Um, and I am pleased that we have the chancellor with us today to share remarks and you have the opportunity to ask questions. So um, we're gonna get it kicked off. I'm not sure, is the chancellor with us yet? I may I'm, be- I'm here, hi Shana. Awesome. All right, so without further ado, um, take it away. Great, thanks so much. Uh, I loved your comments, Shana. You're always uh, uh, optimistic. The glass is always half full with you and uh, I, I just can't thank you enough for your leadership. Uh, uh, I consider you a very valuable member of our team and, uh, and I value the forum uh, uh, so much. And I wanna echo what Shane has said and that is that uh, don't hesitate to reach out. This is, uh, I've seen the compassion on our campus uh, every day uh, during uh, these past uh, five or six months as we've been living in this very strange world of the pandemic. But um, when we get through this together, I know you've had over and over but, uh, I want to just thank you for having me today uh, for a while. Uh, these extremely busy times, uh, as you know, you started to see us do some this week. And uh, as we prepare for the start of, of class on Monday, hard to believe uh, that August 10th date uh, is, is in sight now. We're, we're within five days, I guess. And uh, I just want to start by also saying a big thank you to everyone. Uh, your hard work and preparation uh, this summer is uh, is really moving us forward. Uh, you've heard me say this before, we never shut down uh, our campus. Uh, and uh, uh, many of you have probably been working harder than ever, uh, despite the fact that uh, uh, some of you are working remotely, some of you are uh, working with a hybrid schedule, coming in some days and working remotely on other days. And some of you are here uh, every day, but regardless of where you were located, you're really helping to move us forward. I just continue to be amazed by perseverance and dedication of our staff. Um, I recognize also that uh, not everyone agrees with um, our, our plan, with our roadmap of, uh, of ramping up our on-campus operations. But uh, I would say that we really hard to try to provide as much flexibility, uh, as options as we can for our faculty, uh, our staff, our students. And uh, I just want to thank you for your ideas and your communications in the midst of this. Uh, we value everybody's voice and we'll continue to work to make sure that you're heard. I had a really um, impactful meeting with the uh, housekeepers uh, this past Monday and um, I, you know, I heard from uh, from Shane and a few others about probably two and a half weeks ago that we had that were feeling vulnerable. They weren't feeling uh, they had uh, some of the supplies that they needed and in uh, I'm certain that uh, that I could meet with them in person to hear their concerns, and so we I, I met with Darius and, and Shana shortly after that, and then uh, on this past Monday, with the housekeepers and listened to their challenges, and, uh, and we're working hard to alleviate concerns. And I believe that the, some of the concerns that that they had uh, weeks ago have been um, taken care of, and they're they're not uh, feeling vulnerable at this point. You know, they're hurt. And, uh, and they are as essential as anyone on this campus. And that's the thing I think people realize is that um, you know, there's what is an essential employee. I would say everybody's essential. And uh, we have to, and as we talk about uh, you know, how we move forward, and uh, you have to ask yourself every day, you know, what is it that's essential that I'm doing, and how can I help those who maybe uh, can't? Um, you know, carry out their work in a way that they used to, and, and how can we all step up? Because we're, we're all just together, and uh, I just argue everybody's essential. So, uh, you know, I, I responded to uh, your executive committee letter on budget concerns. Uh, I know that that just probably got a, you know, uh, like yesterday, and 
uh, I want you to clarify uh, a few things. And that is that the UNC system asked us to project budget impact based on enrollment decreases from five to fifty percent, not overall um, spending or revenue of, of twenty-five to fifty percent. And uh, we've, we've seen little impact on our current enrollment, and I don't anticipate uh, extreme decreases at the time. In fact, uh, we we may end up having the largest uh, first year class uh, in the history of the university uh, with those enrollment numbers we finalized here within the next week. And uh, you know, and, uh, many of them are studying remotely, so we, we will have a uh, reduced number of uh, students on campus. In fact, uh, I have to try to combat some of the, <laughs> the misinformation that's out there. Um, we are not bringing everybody back to campus, you, as you well know. In fact, our residence halls are going to probably only get about 60 to 65 percent capacity. Uh, we started about three and a half weeks ago of uh, de-densifying those residence halls, uh, allowing students to consider housing contracts. And uh, our latest numbers last night, we were at about 65% of capacity, and we still have a few days left where uh, we anticipate some students pay off to house still. So my guess is it'll be somewhere between 60 and 65% capacity in the residence halls. And that's going to help on a number of fronts. It's going to help uh, not only in those residence halls, but also in our dining halls and in our uh, uh, the, the um, libraries and uh, uh, all, all the common space. So uh, we put a lot of measures in place to help mitigate the impact of, um, of um, the spread of virus. And, uh, and we've also done a lot to, to getting back to the memo that, that, that you all sent to help mitigate the impact on our finances. Uh, I'm, I am worried about our finances, uh, quite honestly. Uh, while we didn't take a, um, a reduction in state creation this year, uh, we were hearing that we very well we would likely we'll see a reduction next year. Uh, we think we're going to feel the impact of this pandemic um, probably end of 15 months out. Uh, and so we have to be preparing for next year. Chancellor but, uh, Gosswitz, yes. Can I stop you for a minute? We, sure. no, I'm getting uh, loads of res response in the chat that your audio is um, in and out. We can only hear about every third word. Oh my. Um, so I'm not sure. Uh, we've never encountered this before, so I'm not sure how to fix this. I was wondering. Chancellor, is your phone near your computer? It is. That sometimes causes a back and forth. I don't know. I'm sorry about that. I'm glad you stopped me, Shana. <laughs> so we were we we were trying our best to try to decipher what you were saying. Um, <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> uh, okay, let me uh, let let me try something else here. It seems to be better now. Does it? Yeah, okay. now it's not happening. Okay, but you'll stop me if uh, I'm just going to move closer to my computer. Is, and that, actually, is that better? That's so much better. And I hate to say it, but we didn't we didn't understand anything that you said previously. So I hate to do this to you, but can you? <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, I wish you'd stop me earlier. <laughs> we were hoping. Oh, okay, let me just backtrack a little bit. Uh, so what I was <laughs> what I was talking about what I was saying was that uh, I, you know. I, appreciated the memo that y'all sent me regarding our the concerns around uh, budget. And uh, uh, I wanted to emphasize what the UNC system asked us for was not uh, a 25 to 50% reduction in overall spending, but it really had to do more with enrollment. Uh, what would happen if we were down 25 to 50% in enrollment? We're not going to see anywhere near uh, 25 to 50 percent reduction in, enroll in enrollment. We're more likely going to see um, an, an uptick in enrollment. So while I'm still worried about our budget, uh, I'm more worried I about it, it. I think it's happening again. It is. <laughs> is there okay. any way we could just turn off the video for now to see if it's the is see if it's too much bandwidth and just try to have just yep. the audio. This is the First day that I've had to actually work from my home office this morning here. Let me do this. Uh, let me try to shut that off. It's okay. Is that uh, any better? That uh, now seems to be better for the moment. Yes. Okay. So in fact, let me try one more thing here.
Can you hear me now? I think it's happening again. It is happening again. Oh, wait, no, that seems to be okay. All right, I have a put up my external microphone on to see if that might be better. Um, so, uh, as I said, I'm always a work to protect people and I. No, I'm more it's, it's, it's happening again. All right, I tell you what, I'm going to log out and log back in. Excellent. <laughs> I'm sorry. Is Shane, is there something else on your agenda you want to jump to so I can try to get this figured out and then I'll, and then I'll come back in? Sure. Um, I think we'll, if, if Becky is on, can we move to the HR updates? Sure. Excellent. Thank you, Chancellor Guskowitz. We'll, I'll, I'll be we'll back. see you in a few. I'll be back. Okay. All right. Good morning, everyone. I hope he doesn't take long because I don't have a great deal unless you all have a lot of questions for me this morning. Um, and I sort of anticipated he would go first and uh, then I could answer any subsequent questions, but I figured he would get to most of the questions if I'm being honest. But um, I want to echo some of what um, Shana said at the beginning. First, I want to thank all of you. Um, we know these are remarkably tumultuous times. I know they're remarkably tumultuous times. Um, many of you are having to work from home um, and balance a million other things. Some of you are on site already. Some of you are anticipating an on site return um, and also navigating a million other things and also having to take care of yourselves and oftentimes other people. Please take care of yourselves. Um, this is work. It's incredibly important. As the chancellor says, we're all we're all essential at, at some level, um, but your health and well-being uh, should be the top priority and reach out if you need any help. Um, employee assistance is there certainly as one service. There are a handful of others. I know you all have done a lot as the forum to communicate those, but um, I want to say thank you both for all that you're um, doing to sort of navigate what is very much an unknown together with us, uh, for all that you continue to do to help ensure that we're doing our best and trying to um, make the campus as safe and uh, comfortable for everybody upon return, and, and for um, having a little patience and compassion because uh, that has been incredibly important and valuable to us as we navigate this forward. I also want to make a big shout out uh, to Shana and Katie and a handful of others who uh, were part and parcel to the creation of the most recent mask video. Um, it's amazing. And uh, I did see that the, uh, the system sent it around to all of the HR, chief HR leads yesterday saying, this is excellent, just in case anybody wants to do one. So uh, I thought that was pretty incredible. And uh, once again, the employee forum leads the charge. I love that. Um, I thought I would give a brief update uh, about some of the return to campus planning, and I know the chancellor is going to talk more about that, so I won't go into great detail, um, other than to say, um, in large part because of some of the feedback you all provided us about ensuring that we were equipping managers and supervisors and employees more broadly um, about what returning to campus would look like, how to get accommodations, how to get flexibilities, how, how to have discussions about returning to work. Um, really for the first time, Human Resources um, put together training that we delivered more broadly. Um, certainly our office has done training in the past, but not of this for, not of this kind. And I'm pleased to say that as of uh, earlier this week, we've now spoken to um, a little over 4,500 employees um, in doing trainings uh, to department chairs and deans, to managers and supervisors, to employees, and then a specific one in the School of Medicine to really talk about what it is going to look like coming back, how people can manage flexibility requests, accommodations requests, uh, and navigating conversations with their colleagues moving forward. Um, that is certainly not the end all be all, but it's a start. And I will tell you that uh, that training was in fact informed in large part by some of the conversations we had, I had with all of you um, early on and then in our more recent discussions and Q&A. Um, in terms of updates on more general HR matters, most of you have seen the notice about the August uh, leave and benefit provisions. Um, the, the state has reduced the um, paid administrative leave down to zero for August, um, but uh, 
the hope is that the FFCRA benefits uh, would, will cover anybody who has uh, needs that meet a certain number of categories. Uh, the chancellor has also authorized the use of a leave bank that uh, we are working to put together. So if anybody finds themselves without any leave and then needs to go out um, due to the virus, we will provide uh, leave based on their via the leave bank. Um, we anticipate that will look similar to the voluntary shared leave. Um, it would not probably be the sort of thing where I can um, provide leave directly to Katie or to Shana or to anyone, but rather I simply contribute leave into the bank. The bank is then utilized directly by the HR folks to ensure that any employee who needs it gets it. Um, so it would not be a direct person to person, but rather a, a contribution to a pool that is then used. Um, those are really the only updates at this stage in the game. We are having conversations with the system and the system is advocating with the Office of State Human Resources that given what the K-12 schools have done, uh, we may have an added need for a little bit of additional flexibility in the paid administrative leave. Um, options moving forward, uh, but we simply haven't heard anything about September yet. And I would imagine that will depend largely on whether the governor moves us to phase three or not. So more to come on that and I'll certainly keep you posted. Um, beyond that, uh, there's not a whole lot of new news or new um, guidance coming from the system in terms of uh, benefits and leave. Uh, the chancellor mentioned that there's uh, some conversations about or some concerns about the budget and he was just getting into that. I, I see he's back, so I'll let him jump in. And then uh, if there's questions or other things I can chime in on afterwards, I'm happy to do so. Thank you very much. Yep. All right, and I believe the chancellor is back. Okay, take two, is this take any two. better? <laughs> that seems to be much better. Great, leave it up to your 13 year old that can tell you where the best place in the house is with the internet connection that, that works. So <laughs> we can thank Tessa for this. That's I, awesome. I, I had to work from home for a while this morning and uh, anyhow, I, it's just not really uh, where I wanna be. But at any rate, uh, let me just start over. How's that sound? That's perfect. <laughs> okay, great. So I just wanted to I start off by echoing what you had said earlier, Shana, because I really, uh, appreciate your optimism and uh, always uh, sort of a glass is half full approach uh, to leading our employees in the, the forum. And I just want to thank you and I want to echo what you said about uh, the forum and, and our employees needing to reach out when they have uh, ideas, concerns, uh, what we're, everybody's voice is important. But I, I, I wanted to talk about, you know, just it's a busy time of year. Our students have started moving in. Uh, we've now moved in about 20, as of last night, about 2,500 students have already moved into our residence halls. Uh, I wanted to, uh, you know, just thank everybody uh, here on this, uh, in this meeting for all that they've done to help up move us forward over the summer. Uh, it's been, uh, I, I know people have been working harder than ever, despite the fact that many were working remotely. Uh, I, uh, I'm just continue to be amazed by the perseverance and dedication of our staff, and uh, we're just grateful for it. I recognize that uh, not everybody agrees with our plan for ramping up our on-campus operations. Uh, we have tried really hard to provide the flexibility, um, choice, uh, and options for our faculty, staff, and students. And uh, I think that um, I think we've reached a really good balance in that. And I hope that people uh, recognize that some people, like myself being one, obviously with today, this experience is, I, I, uh, some people need to be on campus. Um, and, and I would say that's, you know, so there are faculty that, that claim that they have to be on campus to carry out their work, that, that that's where they carry out their essential function. And uh, there are staff that have said the same and, and students who don't have a better place to, to learn and grow and, and that, that being on campus is where they need to be. And so we're trying to provide as many options uh, so that those resources are available. Uh, and I, I, want, I just want to give a thank everybody for their ideas and communication uh, in the midst of, of all of this, but uh, we'll continue to work to make sure that your voices are heard. Uh, I mentioned earlier that I met with the housekeepers, a group of housekeepers on Monday and listened to their challenges and uh, we're working to alleviate some of their concerns. Uh, that followed uh, a meeting that I had had with Shana and uh, Darius 
Dixon, uh, where we had heard that uh, some of the housekeepers were feeling uh, vulnerable, that they didn't quite have all that they needed to feel safe. And that really touched me. And I wanted to be sure that uh, that they knew uh, I wanted, that I wanted to hear from them. And so we had that meeting on Monday. It went great. And many of the concerns that I think they that some of them were expressing uh, three or four weeks ago have been taken care of. Um, I then talked a little about responding to the executive committee's letter on budget concerns. And uh, Shane, I think you just received that letter probably late day yesterday. Uh, so, um, and I should stop here and ask, am I breaking up at all or does this sound okay? It's perfect. Okay, great. And, and I just and wanted, I, to I wanted to share something from the chat. Uh, Keith Hines has said, Tessa for the win. <laughs> I'll let Tessa know she contributed to today's meeting. Uh, <laughs> But we are, um, you know, there was a lot of confusion when the message came out from the board of uh, the chair of the board of governors about the 25 and 50 percent uh, reductions. And it, there was uh, the media got uh, out in front of this too early without having all the facts. And uh, that was really about they were asking us to project budget impacts based on enrollment decreases of up to 25 and 50 percent, not overall spending or revenue. And uh, so we responded back uh, about a week ago uh, with what that would look like for Carolina. We have seen very little impact on our current enrollment. In fact, as I was mentioning earlier, we're uh, likely gonna have the largest incoming class that we've ever had. Now, the, the, many of them will be studying remotely. But uh, so we, we're not as worried as, as other campuses are about uh, enrollment. Having said that, uh, I think we have to prepare for some type of uh, budget impact, uh, probably in 21-22. We didn't take a, a reduction in state appropriation this year. We, we survived that. I think the, the General Assembly uh, dipped into some of their reserves, which I think they needed to do. Uh, but we're hearing that next year could be uh, a lot worse. And so we have to, uh, as long as we can keep uh, as, as much of the campus operations, on-campus operations up and running, uh, keep enrollment up, uh, whether it's remotely or, or on campus, uh, I think we're gonna we'll, we'll have mitigated some of that risk to the budget. But um, uh, and as you well know, we put measures in place back several months ago uh, that would uh, help mitigate any impact we would have this year. So we put a pause on, on hiring, on, on we were approving very few of the, we were not feeling a lot of in positions, although in housekeeping and a, n a number of our essential um, uh, areas uh, on campus, we are uh, obviously filling those positions because we have, we need them for our on-campus operations. So, uh, but I, as I said earlier, I want to just always work to try to protect our people uh, and our core mission and uh, I just, if there are other ways that you see that we, um, things we need to be paying attention to, we, we want to hear from you. Um, you know, so many of our employees have, have again, gone above and beyond uh, in the face of these unprecedented challenges. We want to make sure that they know that we're, we're trying to protect them. So, um, you know, the roadmap update, uh, I talked a little bit about updates when I met with you last, and um, I, I, I want to emphasize that we are not going to be at full capacity in our residence halls, despite what you might be reading on social media. Uh, we're being criticized for bringing 35,000 people back to campus. Uh, we are not bringing 35,000 people back to campus. Uh, under, under normal conditions, we would have a, around uh, 8,800 uh, students living in our residence halls. And right now, uh, we'll, we'll probably be around 65% of capacity. Uh, so we're, we're going to be down uh, probably in the neighborhood of about 5,500 uh, students, and uh, that's allowing us to spread the density. It's going to help us not only in those residence halls, but also in uh, dining halls, the student union, uh, the, the libraries, etc. So uh, we're doing everything we can to try to uh, reduce the, the volume of people. Uh, you've probably have seen tents going up around campus, these large event tents, and that's again to try to help provide spaces uh, in between classes for students that where they can uh, meet and, and uh, sit in a socially distanced, uh, appropriate uh, distance this area so that we're not having a lot of congregation in the dining halls and the student union. Uh, as you know, students are required to adhere to these, uh, everybody's required to adhere to our community standards. Uh, we have required students to acknowledge their commitment to following these community standards uh, as a condition of their enrollment. And uh, uh, as of yesterday, 93% of the 
and roll student had signed that attestation and uh, uh, we're uh, chasing down the 7% that, that haven't yet and we'll be able to um, uh, provide an update on that by the end of the week. Uh, I sent a video out to campus last week and uh, as you know, campus will look uh, very different. Uh, masks will be required, uh, uh, you know, visitate, visiting will be suspended in residence halls. Uh, we'll have enhanced cleaning and high touch areas around campus in, in residence halls, student union libraries, et cetera. And um, that, uh, uh, that video was really to try to just, again, continue to remind people of what the expectation is. I will tell you that uh, as I, um, have sat, uh, you know, or stood in my office looking out the window over toward the old well uh, every day. Uh, it, I have, I see people adhering to these uh, uh, community standards. And I will tell you, four or five weeks ago, uh, most people walking by were not wearing masks. Uh, that has changed dramatically in the last uh, two or three weeks. And I think it's been a lot of the, just the, the messaging. And I think that it's, people recognize this is what is, is expected uh, if you're on, um, campus. And so uh, um, we're, we're hoping for the best. Uh, again, we're working closely with the UNC system. And uh, uh, I just want to finish up by um, saying that uh, I'm also grateful to the Board of Trustees, our Board of Trustees, for their decision to remove uh, four names from buildings uh, last week. That was a, a historic day last Wednesday. Uh, I think an important uh, step in our work to address racism on our campus. And I know I've heard from many of you uh, on the forum the, the importance of this as you uh, work and live every day uh, here on our campus. And uh, that work um, will continue. And I think it'll be a major uh, topic of conversation here in these uh, early weeks of the semester. We had a uh, at our um, um, joint cabinet retreat yesterday with uh, all the vice chancellors and, and deans. Uh, we uh, had a lengthy conversation uh, around these issues of, of, of race and uh, what we can be doing to make sure we have a, an inclusive, welcoming campus where everybody knows that they belong here. Uh, and we're going to continue those conversations. Uh, it'll be a major theme throughout this year. But uh, I'm just grateful for the uh, your efforts uh, to try to make our community more inclusive. Uh, uh, in all of your departments. And uh, uh, again, uh, thank you for allowing me to jump in today. I'm really sorry about the technical glitches, but uh, uh, hopefully we caught up with the schedule with your schedule. And Shana, if there is time, I'm more than happy to take some questions if you'd like. Sure. If you have time, we have time. Sure. So are there any questions for the chancellor? I'm looking through the chat. You're getting a thank you from James Stamey. Thank you, Chancellor, for coming to Zone 218 on Monday and visiting with the housekeeping staff. We appreciate the hats. Yes, <laughs> we passed out, uh, I had Tar Heel hats for everyone. And, but I did ask the question before I started if there were any Duke fans amongst them. And there was one, um, and, um, and he admitted it. And, but we put, he, he put the Tar Heel hat on proudly and I got a picture with him. So. Uh, uh, that was uh, a lot of fun. Nice. Okay, more coming in. Projected, uh, projecting next year's budget, do you anticipate staff cuts? Again, I, you know, as I told, I, I mentioned this with the housekeeper, uh, the housekeepers on Monday. Uh, I mean, anything is possible, but we are working really hard to protect our people. And Becky can tell you, we've had uh, very few uh, furloughs. Uh, the ones that we've had are ones where the, the that uh, team came to us and, and uh, made a proposal because some, the revenue that paid their salaries was generated over the summer uh, through uh, camps and programs that, that occurred on campus. And so we were able to come up with a good plan there. And I think we would do the same thing as we're uh, looking at, um, at how to protect our people. And so I think we'll be looking at options as we, uh, you know, that's, I always like to have options and put options in front of people if we are in debating a budget shortfall. And um, uh, so we're, we're looking at, uh, at what that would, uh, you know, how we could help mitigate the, that budget shortfall. And uh, we'll know more probably by November, December on what that budget shortfall will look like for next year. Great. Um, so uh, we did want to make you aware, uh, 
they're they're coming in quicker now, so I'm trying to keep up with them. Okay, so um, we do have a brand new committee, the Employee Forum Committee for Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, and we would love for your efforts on campus to partner with our new committee. Um, we would love to be a part of that ongoing conversation. So just putting that on your radar. That'd be great. Uh, I will be happy to come to any meeting, uh, participate however you'd like. I, I, one of the things I've been trying to do is engage, um, you know, as uh, group forming, I think it's important that, uh, that every voice is heard, but to work closely with uh, our strategic plan, Carolina, our next uh, first strategic initiatives, build our community together. Uh, Amy Locklear Tail, Chief of Staff, and Zibby Anderson Tompkins, our Chief Diversity Officer, they are co captains for that initiative. And what I have um, found works best is if, uh, as groups are forming, they check in with uh, Sibby and Amy to see uh, what opportunities that have already outlined and uh, we're trying to fund uh, are in that plan so that uh, we can coordinate the efforts. Uh, so that, that's all that I would ask as a starting place. Great. Um, would remote work continue into next year? Yeah, I think time will tell. Uh, I think we have seen some of the efficiencies uh, that, um, that, that remote work can bring and we recognize that many of our employees also have uh, children uh, in K-12 and uh, that obviously uh, in the Orange County, uh, Durham County, uh, most of those schools right now, Chatham County as well, uh, are going to be remote for um, some period of time. Uh, many of those schools are announcing already up through mid-January. And so uh, we want to try to provide that flexibility because we realize that many of our employees are challenged uh, by that. Uh, and uh, we're hearing uh, there's a lot of uh, progress being made on the vaccine. Uh, and uh, uh, we're hopeful that by... Uh, uh, February, March, that we'll have a, a vaccine. And that will, I think, uh, allow us uh, more opportunity to get people who maybe even are uh, immunocompromised or worried about uh, uh, you know, their, their health, the health risks uh, uh, to, to be back uh, working full time back on campus. So I, there's a, just a lot of unknowns right now, but uh, I, I do anticipate we'll still have some remote working into, into January. Great. Um, and you may have answered this already, but um, uh, it might bear repeating. What is the estimated number of students who will be taking classes on campus during the fall semester, if you know that information? Yeah, uh, great question. And I, I do have an update on that. Um, so right now, uh, we have about 53, 54% of our courses will be taught in person. Um, and uh, But what you have to recognize is that uh, most of those are are small to mid sized classes. So we won't have any class taught on campus that's uh, over 50 or 60 students. And so all of those large lecture classes that typically would have 150 to 200 students in them will be taught uh, remotely. And so while 53, 54% of the classes are in person, the actual seats, people in seats uh, is only about 30%. So 70% of the, um, credit hours, if you will, uh, will be taught remotely and only about 30% uh, in person. Got it. Um, there are a couple of questions about CPE, so I'll try to combine them. Um, uh, it seems to be sort of a rough start with the CPE. Some things may not be available yet. Um, and in the case that they become depleted, uh, is there a plan and also the care kits for staff and Faculty, any sure. updates on that? Uh, what we have been told is that we are um, well stocked, that we are not in short supply of anything. And uh, I have to credit our uh, procurement team um, and uh, in our finance and operations uh, division, they began working uh, on this very early uh, back in um, April and May and uh, working with a number of vendors and so, um, you know, if, if others here are, are hearing that there's a shortage of, of anything, we need to know about it because we're being told, I'm being told just the opposite. Okay. Um, and then. The one thing that we, uh, what I'll, I will add, um, you know, I think when I met with you last, I might've talked about one of our concerns being the supply chain. 
Uh, and uh, that also, we, we've made a lot of progress uh, over the past month in, in that area. We, about a month ago, we were hearing that, you know, one of the off ramps that we might be you know, take, we either just can't uh, test as many people should there be an outbreak. Um, and we needed to test those who had been identified through contact tracing, uh, uh, who had had come in contact with someone who was tested positive. But uh, we've been able to work with Abbott uh, Labs, which is the manufacturer for our testing supplies for the, uh, the machines that we have the analyzers to do our on-campus testing. And so uh, we're in a much better place today than, than where we were a month ago. Got it. Um, thank you for that. And that sort of ties into the next question. So there are some areas that feel like the community standard and guidance seems to be different uh, depending on the leadership in that area. Um, and I know that the employee forum jumped in and really tried to message around masks. Um, but I, I think uh, the ask is, is, can there be more messaging towards leadership across campus that these are really serious um, community standards um, and that they're expected in all areas? Is that something that we can help with? Is that something that we can just sort of hit again somewhere? Just the consistency with the messaging. Sure. I, I think probably the best thing, Shana, would be if, if, if there are specific concerns or areas where you think we're lacking, uh, if you could connect with Joel Curran. Uh, Joel has uh, three members of his team and communications are working on this, and we're pushing out a lot more messaging uh, here this week. We started, and, and certainly be a lot more next week, but if we're missing an area or there seem to be inconsistencies, I'd uh, really like for Joel's team to know about it. Great. Um, and then feel free to jump in folks because I'm reading them as fast as I can. Uh, and Becky also, if, if some of these seem to be your wheelhouse, do you want to jump in? Don't mean to put you, <laughs> don't mean to put you on the spot. Sure thing. Um, I'm happy to also address the question about the, somebody asked about employee care kits. Um, so uh, there was a message that went out yesterday about the student care kits. Uh, there are likewise similar kits for employees. They include two masks, a uh, hand sanitizer and a thermometer because as you all know, we're expecting employees to do some self-assessment at home before they come to campus, answering a series of questions, checking their temperature, that sort of thing. Um, those are to be delivered uh, through the CPE coordinators um, in individual units, and we're working on a message about that, and we'll get that out here shortly. So um, yesterday's message was directed at students because uh, we've got the, the, the distribution plan is a little bit different between students and employees, but uh, we'll make sure um, that we communicate broadly about the distribution of the employee care kits. And then there are two masks in the care kits. Uh, more masks will be available to employees as needed based on their individual job function. Um, and those are to be coordinated. Every unit has a, um, a CPE coordinator. And if you don't know who yours is, your supervisor should be able to alert you to that. And they are responsible for identifying need and making the request to the distribution in procurement that the chancellor mentioned. Uh, likewise, if you are in a unit where you're seeing supplies being diminished, uh, the CPE coordinator can manage it. Great. Um, and then there's some concerns about um, uh, certain supervisors may or may not be supportive of working remotely. Um, and we're just sort of asking that the messaging about flexibility um, and, and issues that are that are extended to faculty, be extended to staff as well? Yeah, and, and I'll just jump in and then let Becky um, say a little more, but uh, Becky and her team did an incredible job uh, back probably two and a half months ago in getting in front of department managers, department chairs, uh, and, and some of the deans uh, to walk through how we can um, get to the right place on this and provide flexibility uh, you know, using not only just, uh, you know, creating a need for an accommodation with every situation, but just some flexibility within units. And so, uh, you know, Becky can jump in here, but uh, we're, we're going to have to, we have to begin to bring uh, 
people back in a phased approach. That's kind of how we're doing it in just at the South building this week. It's very different than it was even last week and the week before. We just started a phased uh, a ramp up. Uh, we don't have everybody back in the office at the same time, but so it's sort of a hybrid approach where most people uh, are uh, in about two thirds of the time working remotely a third of the time. And uh, I will tell you just my own experience that seems to be working really well and it spreads the density uh, again of, of not having too many people in one space. Uh, but Becky, your thoughts? Yeah, um, I, I think we have worked really hard and I mentioned earlier, we've now trained about 4,500 people across campus in the accommodations and flexibility process. And quite frankly, the accommodations and the flexibilities are available to the entire workforce, regardless of whether you're a faculty member or a staff, staff member equally. Um, now recognize individual jobs have different requirements. So there are some jobs that we really need people to be on campus to do and other jobs that we may be able to do two thirds time like the chancellor mentioned. And then there are some that can fully be done remotely either because the business requires it to be done remotely or because the, the space on campus doesn't allow for appropriate physical distancing or, um, or because the person needs a flexibility um, because perhaps they're caring for children. So it's a balance and we have been very clear in saying we want employees to have agency in the decision about when and how to come back to work, but the employee is not the only decision maker. This is a intended to be a discussion between employees and supervisors that take into account the requirements of the job, the mission or function of the unit and what it takes to fully accomplish that mission in support of the institutional mission and the various requests for flexibility across the, uh, across the unit. We have asked supervisors if they have to deny a request for flexibility or accommodations to check with us. And that's our effort to try to create some standardization so that some supervisors aren't declining every request for flexibility just because they're stubborn and others are saying, yep, everybody can do this. We recognize, however, that providing equitable treatment does not mean treating everybody equally because the job duties are different. So our job is to check for equity. It's not gonna look the same across all employee types, but we are, or individual jobs, but we are ensuring that the flexibility and the accommodation availability is equally applied to faculty, staff, and graduate employees alike. Got it, thank you. So yep. Shana, uh, uh, this is Kevin. I have to jump off here uh, and uh, and actually get over to my real office. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I just want to thank everyone again for all you're doing, and uh, and Shana, especially you for your leadership. Um, uh, let let me know how I can help. Uh, I I enjoy coming to these meetings. Uh, you uh, there's always uh, great questions, and I hope that uh, y'all can um, uh, you know spread the, the information that, that's, uh, that we're sharing here out to your workforce and, uh, and, uh, and come back in this direction with more questions or concerns that, that you may be hearing. Great, thank you for joining us today. Okay, thanks everybody. Thanks Chancellor. Take care. Okay, so there are a couple more questions that maybe, Becky, do you wanna give them a shot? Uh, they are in terms of testing and tracing. Sure. Um, and report. I'm happy to give them a whirl. Okay. Um, the first one talks a little bit about, or the first one I'm seeing on here talks a little bit about uh, the dashboard. And there are already students and employees testing positive for coronavirus. Where is this testing being done? Is it self-reported? Those who have tested positive, has there been contact tracing done? Are the students testing positive being moved into the quarantine dorms we've heard of? So there's a lot of questions there. And um, I can tell you what I know. Um, so uh, there are two different processes for testing um, of students and testing of employees. So students are to go through campus health, campus and, and a lot of this is based on um, j just the structures for um, campus health doesn't re isn't really set up to manage employee um, transactions. So occupational health, health is running the employee piece. Students go to campus health um, if they are um, experiencing symptoms and the assessment uh, at campus health suggests they need a test. They will do a test on site at campus health. 
those are being sent off site for the lab portion. That information is reported back to campus health. Um, and if a student tests positive and they live in campus housing or are an athlete living in campus um, athletic housing, they have been moved to the quarantine or isolation dorms. If they test positive and live off campus, they are um, asked to either quarantine or self-isolate depending on um, where in the process they are at, at their own homes. And if in fact they are unable to appropriately self-isolate or quarantine because they live in a shared space with lots of people, our campus health folks are trying to work with them to identify an appropriate space to quarantine or self-isolate. Um, in as part of that process, Campus Health has a series of contact tracers, and the contact tracers will, if they, if someone tests positive, um, engage with uh, the positive case and have a discussion about who they've been in contact with. The contact tracing requirements are 15 minutes of direct contact, unmasked, either party. So if Shay and I, and I were hanging out and I was wearing a mask and she was not, that would be considered, and we spent a half an hour together, that would be considered a contact. Being in a classroom setting where everybody is masked, um, if we are more than six feet apart, uh, that would not be considered a contact. So there are um, CDC and World Health Organization rules on or guidelines on contact tracing. I, don't quote me on whether it's CDC or World Health Organization, but we're following standard contact tracing processes. For employees, if an employee um, believes they are sick, um, they should contact uh, occupational health and occupational health will either refer them to this um, RDC at UNC Health to get a test or they will go to their local physician. The lo they are expected to report back to occupational health and there is a similar contact tracing process that happens from there. Contact tracing um, uh, is managed through occupational health. Right now we are working out what I know is a problem and that is that uh, the testing time is taking a little bit longer than we might like. So people who are contacted by a contact tracer asking them to uh, to saying they may have been in touch with somebody who is positively uh, or who has tested positive, they need to go get tested, then they need to go home for as long as until the test comes back. Right now, because the way FFCRA um, sick leave works, it's not intermittent. So you either use your full portion of it or none at all. And if you use none at all, that means you're using your own leave while you wait for your test results. We're trying to figure out a solution to that. It's not as simple as you might think, but I know about the problem and we're trying to work on it. Um, but the contact tracing is triggered by the, the report back into occupational health. Um, and um, the answer to the, the students testing positive being moved into the quarantine dorms we've heard of, the answer is yes, most of those were uh, the athletics cases and a handful of others. Um, as of yesterday, it's my understanding we had one or no, either one or zero people in either the isolation or the quarantine dorms. Uh, let's see. So the question about uh, FAQ document coming out that faculty and staff could have to get one uniform way of handling students who have COVID information to balance the privacy and health and safety concerns. A lot of staff seem to be confused on the process. Yeah, we're talking about that. Um, and it. I wish I could say it was as simple as, somebody just sneezed, bless you. Um, I wish I could say it was as simple as we can just make a blanket statement and this is the way it's gonna happen every time. We'd like to make that the case, um, but certainly, the way word travels and the way people pass information there are taught and the way the job functions work and the various things that happen afterwards. Um, there are times that we need to do more or less communication. We are sort of working off of this premise at this point in time, and that is we want to protect the health and safety information of our students employees first and foremost, we also 
want to rely on the approved structure of the contact tracing. We, to that end, if I work in workforce strategy and I am planning, or and there is somebody in my unit who tests positive, it is not my job to send out a message saying, somebody has tested positive, everybody go home or any such thing. It's also not likely that somebody's gonna call me and say, Becky, somebody's tested positive unless I am a uh, direct contact and I'm contacted as a result of contact tracing. So what they will, what the plan is, is if somebody tests positive, the contact tracers will be the, the direct contact to people who are believed to be, um, pot, I don't even wanna say at risk, but who would be, um, who meet the, the, the qualifications of contact tracing. There will not be broad communication saying, there are six people in your unit or there is this concern in the unit. Um, we will be tracking the information on the dashboard about positive cases and numbers of tests, um, but there will not be individual contacts because we don't wanna be able to say, well, Keith Hines was sick and I had lunch with him yesterday and they didn't contact me in a contact tracing. Um, well, they might not have done that because we both ate in the same room, but we were six feet apart. We both wore masks and, and actually we were 23 feet apart or whatever it may be. So there is a real intentional process behind it. We're gonna have to see whether that works in all cases or not. Um, and I know there's a lot of work going on about communications related to some of these things, but some of the challenge becomes how to manage the health and safety privacy of our employees at the same time as managing the safety and the safety is key and that's where the contact tracing piece is going to be the most important i'm not sure that came out as clearly as i might like but uh, i hope that begins to answer the question um uh, what should instructors do if a student reveals they cannot come to class because they've experienced COVID related symptoms or if a staff member shares with their manager that they're going to get tested or if a faculty member learns from another faculty member about these kinds of health issues. As a department chair, I could imagine student staff or faculty sharing information with me, even when I ask them not to and learning about all of these things second or third hand. Are there reporting obligations in any of these situations? There are not reporting obligations, but it's really important to remind people that you have no obligation to share any health um, information with a supervisor. If you are concerned that you are high risk or that you are sick, uh, or I guess I should say, if you're concerned that you're high risk or you have a health condition that you think requires that you need an accommodation, you should work through the EOC office. That's a standard process. We're also extending it through COVID to keep your health information separate and removed from supervisors that is not an approach there's no reason under any circumstances that you should share your health information um, with your that you should feel it required to share your health information with your supervisor some of you i understand have totally reasonable relationships and that's not a bother to you but you should feel no obligation or expectation to if an instructor, if somebody says, I can't come to class because they've experienced COVID related symptoms, I would hope they simply say, I hope if you're experiencing symptoms, you'll get tested or you'll go to student health. Um, if a staff member says that they're going to get tested, I, I, I hope they would um, say, I do whatever you need to do, take the time you need to take. We're here when you're ready to come back. Um, we want to lead with compassion. We want to ensure that people who feel sick or feel like they're experiencing symptoms in any way, do not come to work. And the single most important thing you can remember is if you are sick, don't come to work. And if you are concerned that you have been in contact with someone, talk to occupational health and we'll figure out if there is in fact a reason to have an added concern and if there is a need to do testing. We are not doing broad asymptomatic testing in part because of the supply chains that the chancellor talked about, but also because our public health folks tell us they don't, it doesn't actually provide um, as much information as we might like. Um, and it just tests that one moment. So if you're asymptomatic and you test once, particularly for some people, it makes them feel um, that they're not vulnerable in any way and that they're therefore healthy. And in fact, uh, we want to make sure we have testing kits available for those who are symptomatic 
And we wanna make sure that people are wearing masks because there is a great deal of evidence to show that um, even asymptomatic people wearing masks um, are less likely to transmit the virus if the other, if both parties are wearing masks as well. Um, there is a tool for employees to check before coming to work. Uh, the tool is onion and password protected and it sends a confirmation email that the employee can report to work. Can we make this mandatory for staff and employees? Um, there is a tool, but we also are asking people to do a check um, and not have to go into any sort of online tool, but rather do the check before you come. We're providing the thermometer. We're providing the series of questions. Do the check before you come to work. If you feel sick, don't come. Um, we are not going to track information in a in any sort of app or any sort of document, uh, largely because of health and safety privacy rules. Um, uh, for those that work in an open shared work environment, meaning no offices and minimal, minimal ways to social distance, how should this be handled? Uh, this is information we've talked to supervisors about directly. Um, this goes back to the discussion about what are the job functions? What are the physical spaces? What are the needs of the employees in the unit? unit and how do we meet our obligation and our, and our work uh, as associated with the mission? So um, for example, over an AOB, we have a bunch of work units in open shared spaces. We don't have the capacity to put six feet between all of them. So um, when we, in the near term, some of those people are going to continue to work remotely because we can do so in some of those job functions. For those who have to come in, we're going to do an alternate week schedule. So one person is on one week and the next person is on the next week and they're gonna rotate. And we're gonna do those cubes as half, half occupancy. So there will be at least, I think they, we determined it's gonna be about 10 feet between the two um, cubes and masks will be required. Um, as they are across campus. But um, uh, we've asked supervisors to consider both the, or to consider the job duty, the requests of the employees, the function as it relates to the mission and the physical space. And they are encouraged to think about alternate schedules, rotating schedules, uh, and whether, whether and what work can be done remotely. Am I getting close? Um, you're doing a wonderful job. <laughs> um, well, I can tell you that, uh, I, I mean, I have mentioned this before, but um, several, you all have been working re remarkably hard um, to plan for a return and to, and to contribute in, in your individual spaces and to the broader discussion. There, I am part of the campus impl roadmap implementation team. We are meeting for between 90 minutes and two hours every day of the week. And then a handful of other hours on top of that. I probably spend 20 hours a week planning for a return and things are changing really rapidly. So we might decide something. I'm not even sure it's deciding. We might think we're moving one way on Monday and by Friday it's changed pretty dramatically. Um, somebody asked about tents earlier. There are plans to put up a handful of tents across campus. These are largely to increase um, the number of spaces available for congregating and for dining um, because we recognize that um, people when they dine will often or will not be wearing masks and that some of the regular dining spaces in both for students but and for but also for employees, uh, many of the small break rooms that many of you use are shared spaces. They're small. They're not necessarily spaces you want to um, congregate in. And we all know that the outdoor spaces are generally safer. Um, so we are trying to come up with additional tented space to manage some of those. Right now, there is no plan to use the tents for classroom space um, because there are some limitations associated with that. And the weather question is certainly one of them. These are not generally um, the sort of tents that uh, you'd see at a craft fair or something. These are much more robust tents and they are intended to withstand most weather, but we are leasing them. Um, and we have partners that, if the wet, that are watching the weather and if the weather is so um, concerning, we will, um, we will 
they will come remove the tents and then put them back up when the weather is better. We're hoping that is not the regular case because certainly some of the tents we're looking at are much larger. Uh, related to the tents, we're also looking at density and some of the um, dining facilities. Obviously, we're gonna be doing largely takeout. Uh, there will be food trucks located in various parts of the campus um, to increase uh, the availability of food on campus as well. Um, let's see, uh, and related to the tents and I guess it's maybe not related, but somebody asked about the CPE. There are also a handful of locations. Uh, I wanna say, I should know the number. I saw the map, their stars are blue and red on them. Um, that are locate or are designated locations for the distribution of additional CPE if students or employees have forgotten their masks. Um, so there will be uh, some of them will be staffed, and some of them will just be locations where there are, for example, some sort of box that looks like a tissue box. So you don't actually have to touch the one below it, but you'd remove a mask, and it would be. Um, you would have a mask then as you're going into a, an individual academic building. There are, I, I forget the number of them, and we are going to distribute a much broader map of that, but there are locations across campus. Uh, there will also be, um, uh, I believe there will be in some of those cases, hand sanitizer, but there were, there are pretty much um, broad plans to have hand sanitizer located across the campus and there are their big buckets and stands. So they are intended to last a full day based on there's some heavy calculations, but they've got people prepared in I think second and third shift to swap them if need be. And so um, Darius and his team have done a remarkable job sort of planning when and how uh, some of the CPE will be replaced in various high traffic locations. Let's see. Becky, there was a, a question about COVID related community service leave. Can you provide yep. some guidance on that? I should be able to. You'd think that'd be something I'd be totally um, clued into. I, and you know what? I remember there being a conversation about this on a call the other day. And for the life of me, I can't tell you a thing about it. So let me get back to you on that one. Great. Um, can, I, can I put something on your radar when you're doing the research there? Absolutely. We've had a couple of requests for um, uh, 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 being able to provide input on the, um, on, uh, sorry, a volunteer uh, and community service leave issues around some of our most vulnerable employees, um, yep. i.e. creating a food bank, um, and things of that nature. And so we sort of want to get some guidance on how we can proceed with that, given that they will, it will directly benefit some of our lowest paid employees. Um, and so that was an, that was an ask. And the other ask was around the donated leave bank. Yep. Um, and uh, I know that that's still being discussed, but some of the issues around the, the previous leave bank where you had to have all of your leave exhausted before, the, before you could tap into that. And some people, some people found that a bit restrictive, uh, especially since um, you know, to decimate your entire leave um, leaves you uh, in a vulnerable place going forward. So if, there, if there's a way where the forum can be engaged in discussing how that um, combined voluntary donated leave bank happens, that would be awesome. Yeah, so the answer to the first one is easy. I certainly would love to have the forum engaged as we think about the community service leave piece, if there is an opportunity for us to, to, to influence that. And I, I totally admit, I am, I remember talking about this on the system call the other day. I don't remember anything from that meeting. I feel like this is a regular occurrence as a result of COVID, that there are lots of things that go in one ear and out the other. But um, I'm just being honest about my own failures on this one. <laughs> the leave bank question is a little bit harder. I know about the concern that people don't want to see their entire leave exhausted. We have had some discussions both at the system level and at the campus level. And I think it's really hard for us to navigate providing a leave bank absent um, the diminishment of that. And there are some reasons for that associated with the 
making it available and getting the chancellor buy-in to, or the, the leadership, not just our leadership, but the system level buy-in to that. So I, I'm not sure we're gonna be able to come up with a solution that does not require people to exhaust leave in order to use donated leave from other people. Um, but I am happy to go back and engage in that discussion with our colleagues, um, both from the system and on campus and leadership. There's also some structures about how and when it triggers to, um, or how we use the trigger to make it happen on the back end. And um, we, that, that has been a large part of whether the campus would even choose to use this. So this was a, a tool that was offered to the campus, um, to each campus, and it's up to the chancellor to decide if we want to make it available. And we have said, yes, we want to make it available, but there's a little bit of struggle in how we can execute it in a way that meets our tax obligations as well. So there's some behind the scenes stuff that we're trying to navigate, but, and I don't know whether we'll be able to do the, you don't have to exhaust your leave before you use it, but we're, I will certainly take that back. I just want to be transparent about that on the front end. All right. Thank you. Yep. Um, any update on plans to do some format of an employee appreciation day, um, given that we won't be doing a fall break? Um, yes. So um, we have been having some discussions about this right now. Um, you know, we can't do any gatherings of people over 25. So the idea of having bringing anybody together, even if we couldn't do it over fall break is sort of just a difficult question to pursue. So we've just sort of in the um, OHR space sat on this, sort of waiting to get a little bit of additional guidance about where we might go. We've talked about whether we might have the resources to do a distribution of some sort of uh, um, gift or appreciation separately. Um, but as you all know, sort of how we can, like how to make that happen when a number of people are working remotely is a little bit of a challenge. So we would prefer to wait and figure out whether there's any opportunity to bring people together. Um, and we've just decided to pause and see what our, see what things look like in another month or two in terms of where are we seeing this going before we make any decisions. But we certainly don't want to lose sight of appreciating employees. We just know that, bless you, uh, we know that uh, this, the, the fall break is not going to be an option um, and we're trying to figure out what some other ideas are. If you all have ideas, we'd certainly welcome them. I don't want to pretend that we know all the answers on this. Thanks, Becky, for, for addressing that. Um, I will chime in and say the employee forum has talked briefly about still doing so we do the the scavenger hunt. Uh, yes, we have employee appreciation every year. So we've talked about doing, still doing some sort of virtual scavenger hunt because people get so into it. So, yes. like we've talked about doing that. So if if OHR has any sort of plans, we would love to partner with you guys and kind of do something awesome. similar. Well, and I would really, um, our public health experts are telling us that this year is going to be more important than ever for people to get flu shots. Um, and I am hoping we can leverage the flu shot clinic that we've had, but maybe there's also a way we can end the scavenger hunt in a flu shot or come up with some way to partner. Um, obviously there are some people who don't want them, but we also know that a way to decrease the number of people utilizing testing would be, uh, to address the flu shot issue this year. So, um, it, it, maybe that's also something we can think collectively about how we can address, um, but I'm happy to work with you and others in partnering on that. Yeah, absolutely. And, and on that note, um, Becky, I don't know if you have an update, but the employee forum is usually very plugged into and participates in um, uh, University Day. And I know that we're giving an award this year. Is there any update on what that might look like? Yeah, so I think this year, um, I believe our understanding was that awards were going to be done the day before um, all of the awards, because if I remember correctly, <clears throat> and this may very well change given where everything is, that Kevin's installation is happening on University Day. And so they were pulling the two apart with the idea that then next year they'll all be won and awards and University Day will all be, but there it's going to be sort of a weekend, <clears throat> excuse me, event of University Day 
awards, that sort of thing. Um, I haven't heard anything more about that, to be honest with you, but I can certainly check. That's a totally fair request. Great, because yeah. we are we are going to be um, distributing our call for nominations probably starting tomorrow. So. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Great. I think we have come to all of the questions. Becky, thank you so much. Uh, oh my you, gosh, yes. Thank you, you great, all for all that you're doing. There. <laughs> so appreciate the updates. And you know, um, what I'm hearing from all over campus is we're just trying to keep up. Um, and I know that you are too. I know that everybody across campus, uh, it's like the, the flood of information, um, you get it and then in the next instant it changes so it's very hard to communicate <laughs> that um but we appreciate you coming and and um fielding questions and um keep doing what you're doing and we will keep working with you uh if there is anything that you can think of that the employee forum can help partner with please let us know as as always open door policy both ways and thank well, you thank you much. thank you i really enjoy the opportunity to chat with you and i also appreciate the questions and if you think that um if you all have questions along the way that you think we can do a better job of answering or you need us to either talk directly to the forum or to P or to the campus more broadly please just chime in and let me know um, we're doing our best to respond to what we think are the best the best and most current issues we're doing our best to respond to the questions that are coming into hr.unc.edu we're trying to do communications that meet the needs that we think people have um, but as you said, things change pretty rapidly. So if we're missing something, by all means, let us know. Great. And there, there are more questions, but what I think we'll do is we're going to collect these questions. We're going to try to um, remember the answers and maybe get those distributed so they can be distributed more widely. Perfect. Sounds good. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, everybody, so we're going to move on to the next part of the agenda, which is the consent agenda, but I think I will give uh, folks a chance to report out briefly if they would like to from the committee. So is there a motion to approve the June and July minutes? I move to approve. Is there a second? Jen Daniel, second. Uh, and given the virtual um, experience here, are there is there any opposition to approving the minutes? Is there any abstention? Okay, the minutes are approved. Would somebody like to report out for the Communications and Public Relations Committee? Is Shane with us today or Greg? Hey, Shana, sorry, I had to step out of my office. Phone. Okay, thanks, man. Um, I just literally sat down and heard you say my name. <laughs> um, so what's up? <laughs> uh, would you like to report out on the Communications and Public Relations Committee? Yes, um, definitely. Um, so we, we met uh, a couple weeks ago to set up our, uh, well, our next date, but then talk about our plans for uh, the, the year um mainly we covered uh going over the podcast kind of expanding um wanting to highlight the different committees along uh points of the year when um it would make sense to do so so uh one thing we'd like to do is contact people you know for um the new diversity committee and talk to them about the genesis of that the development of their plans and kind of uh, do a, a dive onto them uh then the community service committee uh, later on once it comes towards um, blood drive time and then uh, so on, uh, maybe aim for four episodes through the year. Uh, see if we can hit that. Um, then uh, Katie, I saw was mentioning right when I had to step out that uh, we still would like to do the um, scavenger hunt in some form or another. Uh, a summer program that I work uh, help out with did a digital scavenger hunt with um, some students that I think we could adapt that platform. I need to do a little deeper dive into how everybody could access that. But I think even if there isn't a um, uh, official employee appreciation day, we could still try and do something um, to get people, um, you know, to be interactive and have some fun and 
hopefully feel appreciated. Um, I know a number of uh, people in my department, you know, look forward to the scavenger hunt and have fun with it. And, you know, it's uh, um, if we can recreate something, even if it's digitally, uh, I, I'd like to try and do that. Um, and uh, in touch, Craig sent out the draft of that. So that should be going out very soon. Um, okay, good, good. I got a thumbs up. Uh, <laughs> Yes, that, I think that went out yesterday. Okay, good. <laughs> Sorry, it's a it very, very scattered. Uh, it's a it's very okay. busy week. <laughs> um, and I believe that is everything. <laughs> Great. Shane, thank you very much. I appreciate the multitasking. It's, no it, it's what it's about. Thank you. Um, Natalia, are you, I see that you're on. Would you like to um, report out on the book club? I know that you had some... I'm sorry. I, can I jump back in? There was one thing I did forget. Okay. Um, uh, we, we talked about in our meeting um, about, uh, you know, different ways of trying to communicate with each other that since email, at least for me, is extremely bogged down. And um, one thing that came up was utilizing Microsoft Teams. Um, and it was mentioned that, that those might be set up for the different committees already. Um, I meant to ask about that, but uh, uh, I'd forgotten to follow up with that. Does anybody know? If that yes. was true or, yeah. Those are set up and we'll make sure you get access. Okay, great. That, that's awesome. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry to interrupt. You're quite welcome. <laughs> Natalia, are you around to talk about the book club? Yeah, so we wanted to talk about possibly um, finding another chair for the Employee Forum Book Club Committee this year. Um, did not have any interest during the retreat. So I was trying to find out if other people wanted to perhaps uh, lead up that committee. Anybody wants to volunteer discussion? I can talk about kind of what happens and how you can facilitate the group and lead everybody. Do you wanna give a brief overview of what that looks like? Um, so, you know, in the past couple of years, we've met, the committee has met, and then we decide um, which books we want to read, and um, the organization just includes um, kind of coordinating with Matt. He's very helpful as far as setting up the events and event, UNC event registration, um, but, you know, mostly the marketing um, and then ordering lunch for everybody, but of course, we're virtual right now, so that wouldn't require us to kind of come up with other ways to engage during that hour when we discuss the book that we read that month. Got it. So, is there um, is there any? I, I don't want to put everybody under the uh, uh, on the spot right now, but if there is interest in chairing the book club. Do you want to reach out to Natalia and or me or Matt and we'll try to talk further about that offline? Does that make sense? Okay, thank you, Natalia. You're welcome. Community service. Hi. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and, and get that done. We had our meeting shortly after the last uh, August, another uh, July meeting. This is August. Time, is it real? Who knows anymore? Um, we, we kind of established some goals, um, specifically areas that we thought were going to be really important in the, the coming up. Obviously, the blood drive is, is big. We're really looking forward to that. We're very grateful that Jen has taken over from Jim handling that. So shout out to Jen for handling that because I don't want to. I'll happily support. Um, but some of the issues that we really thought were important were uh, food insecurity and isolation, um, both for employees and just our community in general. So we're looking out, uh, reaching out to do that. Um, I recently spoke with CCPS. That's partly why I asked my question about the community service leave, the COVID related stuff. Um, we're trying to come up with a, a list of non nonprofits that would be um, that would be directly tied to the COVID relief so that people could use that and still have their community services. Um, Habitat for Humanity is one of our big builds. They have just recently in Orange County started redoing um, volunteer days. They're very limited. There are only a couple slots last time I spoke. They are requiring masks. They prefer you to bring your own tools. 
Um, so we're going to continue working with that, but we do have a couple things that we are looking forward to do. Um, uh, we also are currently partnering with someone to see if we can get Carolina Cupboard to be okay with um, making itself available to staff, considering that everything is getting tight for everybody. Um, so we're hoping to find some more information with that. Once I get something, I would love to have a moment to kind of talk to communication and see if we can come as many different ways as possible to make sure that all of our staff and employees here at the university are aware of all the possible ways of helping their community while at the same time, it's still getting paid. Um, so yeah, that's kind of where we're at right now. If anyone would like to join, we'd be more than happy to have more people there. Uh, we will have another meeting here in a little bit after this meeting. Um, if you want to do that, just email me, I'll put my email in the chat and I will invite you to Zoom if you want to. Great, thank you. Uh, Jen, did you want to speak a little bit about the Carolina Blood Drive? Yeah, I would, I would just add on uh, that if you are interested in working on the blood drive, which this year the plan is to have that uh, in November before Thanksgiving, uh, I'll put my email in the chat as well and please send me an email. We'd love to have you on the committee. Uh, we're in the process right now of getting approval to have the blood drive. Uh, as Becky mentioned, there is a limit on gatherings right now of 25 people. So we're working with the Red Cross and with leadership here at Carolina to make sure we can safely hold the drive. Uh, similar to how we held the drive in June, which uh, was awesome. And thank you to everyone who worked on that because it went really well. Um, but that's, if you have any questions, please, you can ask them now or you can send me an email and ask me later. Great. Thank you, Jen. Arlene, did you want to talk a little bit about the Carolina Community Garden? Uh, the big news was actually in the In Touch yesterday that accepting um, volunteers again, just limited numbers, and you have to sign up to, in order to get a space to volunteer. Great, thank you. And is Antonio on for the Diversity, Equity and Inclusion Committee? I don't see him on the call. Is there someone else who would like to report out for the committee? Okay, we'll come back to that. Education and career development. Hey everyone, this is Laura Pratt, um, co-chair along with Ellie Alexander of Education and Career Development Committee. Just wanted to give a brief update on the Carolina Family Scholarship. I'm pleased to announce that we had 48 applicants and we were able to um, select eight students who will be coming to school in the fall at the North Carolina schools, um, $2,000 each. So we were able to give out $16,000 in scholarship for the Carolina Family Scholarship, which is really exciting. Um, so good news on that. Uh, also wanna say that our next meeting is gonna be Monday, August 17th at 10 a.m. At this meeting, we're gonna do our goal setting for the year. So it would be really fantastic if you wanted to join us. It's a, a great initial meeting to join. Uh, like everyone else, I'll put my email and Ellie's email in the chat. Sorry about that. <laughs> Thank you very much, Laura. Membership and assignments, is Tiff on? Yep, I'm here. So um, my only request is that all of the committee chairs, if you haven't already, please send me a complete roster of members for your committees so that then our committee can meet and figure out ways to um, make sure that you've got support and make sure that everyone who is a delegate is assigned to a committee. Great, thank you, Tiffany. Personnel issues. So uh, Steph and I have two really short updates, um, one of which there's a vice chancellor's reps meeting uh, coming up in on the 13th in a week. Our deadline to submit questions that you probably have gotten an email from Matt about is tomorrow at 10 a.m. Uh, Personnel Issues has a, has a Microsoft Teams site um, that we're trying to kind of combi compile things. Obviously, if you have a question that pertains to your work or those of those of the folks you represent, um, feel free to like submit your own questions or send them to Shana. Um, but if there is a reason to have the Personnel Issues Committee as the sort of intermediary to ask those questions um, that you're hearing from staff, um, then feel free to reach out to uh, me or to Steph or any of the folks on the committee. Um, in terms of the 
the um, just sort of uh, logistics thing. If anyone who thinks they are on the personnel issues committee and hasn't gotten any notification about teams um, or anything else like that, or if you think I should be on this committee, but I'm not listed on the website, um, feel free to reach out to me or to Steph and we'll follow up to make sure that you get added to the places that you're supposed to be added to. Um, Steph, anything else that you wanted to add? No, Phil, you covered it. Um, I'll throw my email in the chat so you guys can reach out to me if you want us to ask a question at the VC reps meeting or if you want to be added to um, the team site. Great. Awesome. Teamwork. Thanks. Thank you. Um, recognition and awards. Natalia, you want to talk a bit about that? Um, and I do have an update on the Rebecca Clark Award. Is Natalia still with us? Sorry, I was trying to unmute myself. That's quite all right. Um, so what would you like for me to talk about for the award? Do you want me to just kind of go over what we do or? Sure, if you want to give a brief overview um, and then I can talk a little bit about the addition of the Re Rebecca Clark Award. Um, so every year we open um, award awards for staff. It's um, usually in the spring during the month of April, the entire month of April, you can nominate your colleagues and coworkers for awards. Um, and we award uh, a certificate. We have a, a monetary um, gift that comes with the award now of $100. Um, our, you know, the award that's probably our biggest award is the Three-Legged Stool Award, also known as the Community Service Award. Um, where you receive um, a three-legged stool that's engraved with your name and a nice little message from the employee forum. Um, so yeah, we typically encourage everyone to, um, you know, help us market our awards to your colleagues and then um, nominate people. Or it's probably a, a really good way to get uh, give you know, people you work with, um, kind of kudos. So did I cover everything, Shana? Yes, thank you. And I, and I think it will be particularly important this year after this long haul. Um, uh, those awards happen um, in April and May, the process, and I think they're, uh, I think they're awarded in May. Am I correct on that, um, Natalia? Yes, we, we usually give them out. Um, well, the, the notifications go out between May and June. Um, we've been, uh, typically every year we, we host uh, during the June event, we host like a nice little um, awards ceremony where we have food and, um, you know, the uh, recipients get the award, you know, during our monthly employee forum meeting. Um, however, you know, this past year we did it virtually, which I thought still worked really great. And then the, the, all the recipients of the awards this year were posted on the OWL website in addition to our own website. So we featured it a little differently this year since we couldn't you know, have in-person events. Great, and I agree. I think it did work really well. Um, the, the addition, and it is coming up in old business this year, which gives, our, gives us a different timeline is the Rebecca Clark Award. And we're a little behind because this is a new award, but those, the call for nominations will go out probably, um, Matt and I will work on that right after we get it out of this meeting. Um, but they will be in all business today, there'll be a brief slideshow about what the Rebecca Clark Award is, who she was and um, what that's all about. So Natalia and, and your team, I hope you're, uh, I hope you're ready to, start making selections for a brand new award. I'm really excited that this will be part of the University Day celebration going forward. That's that's a huge accomplishment on the, on the part of the staff forum, so uh, the employee forum. So thank you very much for all that. Look out for that in the old business today. Um, moving on to UNC System Staff Assembly. Keith, uh, James or Laura, would you like to report out on the staff assembly? 
Laura's shaking her head. I mean, I will if you want me to. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think James is on, so that leaves Keith. Okay, we'll do a very brief overview then. Um, so last week we did a two-day retreat, um, which, sorry, there's a little one asking to go potty. So Shana, I'm sorry, I need to divert to you. <laughs> that's, quite, that's quite all right. Um, so uh, as Laura was saying, the staff assembly did meet Last week, we had a two-day retreat. Normally, we try to visit two other campuses um, uh, during the year or one other campus, and two of the meetings are held here at UNC, so we get to see what, uh, what is happening on, uh, on the other campuses and get sort of a view of what that looks like. Uh, but once again, it was remote. We, we um, usually get an HR update from Matt Brody, who is the Vice President of Human, Human Resources for the Staff Assembly, um, the whole system. Uh, and so we will keep you updated as those updates come to us. That brings us to, does anyone wanna report out on the executive committee? All right, I will say, um, I think the chancellor mentioned it in his remarks. Um, we did send a letter to the chancellor from the executive committee with concerns um, about the requested budget cuts. Um, we had crafted a resolution to vote on today. However, we got a response last night to our letter. So I would like to table that resolution until we can incorp either incorporate the response or decide how to move forward um, with that because we did get a very nice response and um, and to be fair I do want to incorporate that before we actually draft a resolution so just coming up in old business there will be the reading of one resolution not both of them and um, I think that comes to the end of our committee reports there's something in the chat um it is got it um it is a brief update on the employee forum committee for diversity equity and inclusion the committee did meet and they established how they would interact and move forward so great that's a brand new committee and they're already moving forward on that so thank you very much to the folks on that brand new committee and then uh a question on Microsoft Teams. Yes, we will um, We will address uh, getting access to Microsoft Teams for everybody on those um, specific committees. So let's move on to old business. Um, and we have a proposed resolution in support of renaming campus buildings. And I'm gonna try to share my screen, make sure I have it up. I have no idea if this is it. Are you seeing the resolution? You are. Yes. Yes. Great. So um, this resolution was drafted uh, in, uh, it is a continuing effort to um, stand in solidarity with our communities of black and brown employees on campus. And um, so I will, this is technically the first reading. We'll read it. They'll be open for discussion. And then we will vote to move to a second reading or not. Um, so if the parliamentarian is on, if I have misstated any of the process, please let me know before I start the reading. Will do. Awesome. <laughs> okay, resolution. 20-01 regarding the board of trustees vote to rename building names that honor individuals tied to white supremacy and racism resolution of the employee forum the university of north carolina at chapel hill august 5th 2020 whereas it is customary for the employee forum to recognize changes in administrative policies and practices to the benefit of university employees and 
Whereas the University Board of Trustees voted on July 29th, 2020 to remove the names from four campus buildings that honor individuals tied to white supremacy and racism. And whereas this renaming represents a tangible step in the effort to break apart the systemic racism that has permeated the university's history. And whereas renaming, removing the names of these individuals serves to reduce the strength of racism and white supremacy on campus affairs and the campus workplace. And whereas removing this divisive imprint from the campus nomenclature, if not its history, removes official endorsement of these odious sentiments that serve only to divide one, an, one from another. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the employee forum hereby lauds the work of the Commission on History, Race, and a Way Forward in documenting the misdeeds of these men and their exercise of influence and public trust against Black North Carolinians, and be it resolved that the employee forum also lauds the action of the UNC Chapel Hill Board of Trustees to remove these individuals' names from these buildings, be it further resolved that the employee forum urges that the commission's work continue as these efforts are overdue, necessary, and appropriate, signed on behalf of the delegates of the employee forum. So the body, it is now open to discussion. And would you like me to leave the resolution up as we discuss? Yes, okay. So the floor is now open for discussion on resolution 20-01. I will say that I, in this mode, screen sharing, I do not have access to my chat. So um, I'm asking that if there is discussions, either somebody read it from the chat for me or uh, say it out loud. Hey, it's Hallie. Um, I support it. It looks like the chat is saying that the majority of people are in agreement. Thank you, Hallie. <clears throat> This is Tracy. Um, this is great. I agree. Um, my only question is to make sure that this is, I mean, I realize that the names are of men, but do we want to put these people instead of men just to be inclusive? I'm just, it's, it's a small thing. And the, whereas um, the misdeeds of these, of, of these men and their excise of influence do we want to just change these people to keep language consistent we use individuals later on in another whereas i would i would say we could say individuals, individuals again. instead of men i agree it's it's a small point but just okay Once again, I, I don't have access to my chat, so please let me know, uh, read anything aloud so that we can discuss. Yeah, everything is in support. Um, it looks like nothing, nothing opposed at, at this point. Um, this is just a syntactic thing, but after the second resolution, uh, we need a comma and. So be it resolved that the employee forum also lauds, yada, yada, yada. There needs to be a comma and after these buildings. Comma and, okay. So Kevin, correct me if I'm doing this incorrectly, but with all of those changes, if everybody else um, is sees those as friendly amendments, I would move that we um, suspend the second reading rule 
um, to be able to vote on this today. You can do that. So let me um, let me point out a point of process for open meetings. And first, let me ask: Is Tiffany on the line? I'm here. So it's my understanding that to vote in an open meeting, you have to have a roll call. Are you are you in a place where you could do a roll call and ask for a vote out loud? Um, I can do it very quickly. If, right. if you can't, I can help. Okay, okay. yeah, Please. I actually have to leave to head to campus and I was just about to log off, <laughs> but I can do this real quick. Well, it, it, we're gonna have to do this for the roll to, to the vote to suspend and then also the vote to approve. So okay. well, Tiffany, then, Tiffany, could you send your list to Laura and she could do the roll call on your behalf? Um, I have it written. I don't have it typed okay. right now. Um, what I did the last time when we did it was I just went through this. I just read off everyone who was on screen um, and they voted that way. Like we did it that way. I don't know if that is the best way to do it, but that's how we did it the last time. Do we just have a full list of delegates? Because I think you're supposed to have read a, everybody. From, I have the website pulled up with the list of delegates broken out by division. I could call yeah. them out that way, knowing the that Laura, not everyone's here. Laura and I are on the same page. I just did the exact same thing. Um, yeah, I, I was to about to pull it up. I have that a in my office. Great. If, okay. So, if, if that would make anybody's life easier. So, Laura, if you could, if you don't mind doing that for me, because I need to switch over from computer to phone, um, that would be awesome. Great. Sure so, thing. And I passed off my other colleagues, so we shouldn't have any other interruptions. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. So, um, I, I guess, Katie, are you putting out the motion? There is a motion on the floor to suspend the second reading. Um, so is there a second to that motion? Marlene, second. So uh, now is where we have to vote. Correct. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through starting at division one, calling names. I deeply apologize if I mispronounce your name. Feel free to correct me, um, either publicly or personally. I won't take offense to it. So I will go through. Please state yay, nay, or abstain. Do I have that right, Kevin? Yep. Awesome. Yes. OK, here we go. Lauren Anderson. Yay. Randall Borer. Not present. Yeah, I'm here. Sorry. I oh. Just struggling to get myself off mute, but yay. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, Sarah Carrier. Yay. Adrian Cromwell. Yay. <laughs> Philip Edwards. Did Phil have to head off. Look, I don't see him anymore. Yeah, he had to leave. Okay. Um, I might have missed that. My apologies. Kevin Robinson. Yay. Robert Smith the third. Yay. Tim Carvel. No Tim. James Holman. I believe James is not here. James Stamey. Yay. Hey, James. Glad your mic's working. That's nice. Um, Rich Brandenburg. Yay. Thanks, Rich. Ellie Alexander. Yay. Tiffany Carver. Yay. Uh, Karen Gilliam. She's not in today. Karen is on the YouTube um, uh, link. Unfortunately, I, I sent her the wrong link um, today. So um, if, if Karen, if you're there and have a chance to email me, I can relay your, um, your vote. Thanks so much, Matt. Mandy Melton. Yay. 
Laura Pratt, yay. Jacob Womack. Yay. Excellent. Moving on to division five, Stephanie Brown. I believe she's out. Okay. Haley Butler. Hallie. 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 Yeah. Okay. Sorry, yeah. Hallie. Valerie Cartagena. Thought I saw her on. Yay from the chat. Thank you, Valerie. Uh, Stephanie Foreman. Yay. Natasha Hanks. Yay. Mary King. Mary was on earlier. She's still here. I do not see Mary in the chat anymore. Okay. Uh, Katie Musgrove. Yay. Kelly Sirlock Cross. Yay. Excellent. Moving on to Division Six. Jesse, last name B. Please pronounce that for me. Bon Giovanni. Yay. It's wonderful. Thank you, Jesse. Thank you. Uh, Morgan Douglas. No, Morgan. Leah Hefner. Yay. Thanks, Leah. Keith Hines. Yes. Arlene Metter. Hi. Khadijah Murray. I don't think Khadijah's on anymore. She was on earlier. Uh, okay, Sarah Smith. Yes, from Sarah Smith. Thank you, Sarah. Matthew Teal. Yay. Excellent. Moving on to Division 7. I am going to completely ruin this first name. I apologize. Denisita Blackwell. I know it's completely wrong. I don't think Zanita is on. Thank you, Katie. Wonderful. I'm going to work on that pronunciation. Uh, Joanne Blake. No. Okay. Alicia Brandt. Yay. Thank you. Uh, Melissa Campbell. Elizabeth DeBose. Yay. Thank you. Nicole Eagleston. Eggleston. Zebediah Harris. Clinton Miller. Ayla Acasio. Yay. Thank you. Sarah Wackerhagen. Yay. Charles Streeter. Oh, I guess he's not voting. Excuse you. Okay. All right, the big one, Division 8, let's do it. Darren. Yay. Robert. Thank you, Darren. Ashley Belcher. Andrew Brennick. Yay. Shane Brogan. Yay. <clears throat> Yay. Shayla Evans Hollingsworth. Yay. Adrian Galibsko. Adriana Jabalisco. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. It's okay. Okay. On vacation today. So Adriana oh. on vacation. Excellent. Good for her. Okay. Uh, Chrissy Greenberg. Jesse Hill. Shana. Yay. Quintara Jernigan. Yay. All right, I'm going to get this right. Ide Marches. 
it's probably wrong. You got the name right, Aide Marquese. Yeah. Hooray, that's one win, I'll take it. Thank you. Uh, Jeff, I don't think I've seen Jeff on, Jeff McQueen. Natalia Neal. That's a yay for me. Thank you, ma'am. Joe Orman. Yay. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. Lakeisha Person. Yay. Tom Ross. Teresa Silsby. Greg Smith. Okay, uh, Antonio is Antonio back on Squire. Jake Stollard. Rose Thorpe. Rose was on. She may have had to step away. Looks like she's off now. Okay, uh, Michael Williams. Tracy Weatherby Williams. Yay. And from the chat, Joanne Blake said yay as well. She's oh, having excellent. some trouble. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Allison's out on leave. And finally, Jen Danil. Yay. Yay. Bringing up the rear. Great. So we have a <laughs> lot of people absent. Do we have enough for a quorum? I just heard from Kevin, his internet, uh, quit but he's going to try to get back on but he does he said we do have a quorum so the vote um is validated either way so Super. just we have 51 participants out of 70 something uh delegates uh, on the call so um if everybody if the majority of people voted yes the vote uh passes great and so just yeah. to be clear everybody that was a vote to suspend the second reading rule now we will is there a motion on the table to approve the resolution with two minor changes as indicated in the discussion. Uh, Natalia moves to approve from the chat. Is there a second? Arlene seconds. We have to go through the vote process again. Oh boy, okay, hopefully I learned something. And this um, everybody is to actually approve the resolution. All right, I'm going to go a little bit faster this time because I know we're running low on time. Uh, Lauren Anderson. Approve. Randall Borer. Randall was on. Maybe he's off now. Randall, if you're still on, just place your vote in the chat, please. Sarah Carrier. Same as Sarah. If if we, I move past you, just put your vote in the chat. <laughs> Adrian Cromwell. Proof. Thank you. Phil Edwards, back on or no? He stepped away. Evan Marsh. Approve. If Kevin's back on, Kevin Robinson. Yay. Robert Smith III. Yay. Tim Carvall, I don't think's on. James Holman, not on. James Stamey. Yay. Rich Bradenberg. Proof. Ellie Alexander. Yay. Tiffany Carver. Yay. Karen Gilliam. Not around. Oh, she's on the YouTube. That's right. Uh, Mandy Melton. Mm. Approve. Thank you, Mandy. Uh, Laura Pratt, approve. Jacob Womack. Yay, approve. Uh, let's see. Stephanie Brown. She's out. Hallie Butler. Valerie, Approve, sorry. That's okay. No problem. Thank you. Uh, Valerie Cartagena. I think you were in the chat last time. So we'll look in the chat. Stephanie Foreman. Natasha Hanks. Approve. Mary King, if she's back on. Katie Musgrove. Yay. Kelly Serlock Cross. Yay. Jesse B. Yay. Morgan Douglas. Not on. Leah Hefner. Yay. Keith Hines. Did Keith jump off? 
Oh, Keith's still here. Keith! Keith, if you could put your vote in the chat, that'd be great. Uh, Arlene Metter? Aye. Khadija, are you back on? Sarah Smith? Approve. Thanks, Sarah. Matthew Teal? Yay. Okay. Blackwell's not here. Joanne Blake? Joanne approved. Thank you, Joanne. Alicia Brandt? Yay. Mel Thank you, Alicia. Mm -hmm. Melissa Campbell? Elizabeth DeBose? Nicole Eggleston? Yay, says Eliza. Hi. Thank you, Eliza. Zebediah Harris? Clinton Miller? Ayla Ocasio? Yay. Sarah Wackerhagen? Yay. All righty. Darren? Yay. Ashley's Yay. not with us. Thank you, Darren. Andrew Brennick? Yay. Shane Rogan? Yay. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Thanks, Shane. <laughs> Shayla Evans Hollingsworth? Yay. Yeah. No, Adriane. Did I get it right that time? Yeah. Close enough. Okay, she's not here. Uh, Chrissy? I think she popped off. Jesse Hill? Shayna Hill? Approved. Quintara Jernigan? Approve. Ide? Approve. Thank you. Jeff McQueen, join us. Nope, Natalia Neal. Did she hop off? Okay. Joe Orman. Approve. Lakeisha Person. Approve. Thank you. Tom Ross. Teresa Silsby. Greg Smith. No, Greg. Antonio, are you back on? No, Antonio. Jake Stollard. Rose Thorpe. Michael Williams. Saw Tracy's chat. Tracy said yay via chat. Tracy Weatherby Williams, that is, for the record. Allison is out. And Jen Daniel. Yay. Awesome. Thanks for hanging in there with me, guys. Okay, I believe um, the resolution has now been approved. Thank you, everybody. This will be submitted to the chancellor's office and posted to the website. Thank you very much for your patience with this process. And we are going to move on to the next step. And uh, I think this is the last piece of business in our agenda today. So I'm once again gonna share my screen and we're gonna talk about the Rebecca Clark Award. Please let me know if you are now seeing the screen. Once again, I can't. I don't see the chat. So uh, yeah, we, we see the screen. If do you want to go into presentation mm -hmm. mode? Yes. Okay. Excellent. So, so the Rebecca Clark Award. Uh, is going to be the first staff award ever given at University Day. It will be the Rebecca Clark Staff Award for Moral Courage. Um, and this year, as you heard uh, Becky talk about, the, the, um, the awards will be given over the weekend, the night before, as this year will be a little bit different. It'll be the installation of the chancellor. But going forward next year, during University Day, um, there are several people invited to speak, one of which is a representative from the employee forum. And at that point, we will be presenting the award to a staff member um, on the stage. It is based on Rebecca Clark, who was an employee here on campus. If you go to the employee forum website, 
you will see uh, under resolutions, if you go into 2016, there's a resolution um, that we passed asking for this award. So this is a four year in the making project. It is a passion project for all of us who have been on the forum for that amount of time. And we're delighted that we finally are able to present this award in honor of Rebecca Clark. So please take a minute to go to the website and learn a little bit more about Rebecca and her work. Um, it celebrates a current staff member who has selflessly advocated for better working conditions for staff. Um, and these are the criteria. It's once again, based on Rebecca Clark, who selflessly advocated for better working conditions for staff. It's based on her values, which were a courageous spirit, a willingness to speak out about inequity and discrimination, a strong sense of fairness and personal integrity. And most importantly, the recipient demonstrates a strong commitment to social justice, especially with regard to the treatment of fellow workers. So that's a brief description of what the Rebecca Clark Award is. The request for nominations is going out via Qualtrics uh, probably by the end of this week. Uh, Matt and I have crafted um, the call for nominations. So uh, that will be going out. That will be widely publicized. We have a very short time frame to receive applicants, choose an award, uh, to be given on October 12th. So once again, as if as any award, we have to vet this candidate, the winner through the HR office. So we are shooting for getting a candidate selected by September 15th to meet the deadline. So this is a pretty tight deadline. Are there any questions about the process and or the Rebecca Clark Staff Award for Moral Courage. Just for my clarifying process, this is gonna be something that's gonna be considered by our awards committee, is that correct? I think what we decided was the awards committee and the committee for diversity, equity, and inclusion would work in partnership on selecting a candidate. And I, and I also want to remind everybody that um, you don't have to be a delegate to work on committees of the employee forum. You do have to be a delegate to chair the committee. So um, it is up to these two committees if they want to open up the committee selection um, process to other people on campus. But I'm gonna leave that up to these two committees because this is their work and I don't wanna meddle. Okay, I do wanna give time to, uh, to offer any questions because this is a brand new award and we're, we are paving the way. So please, if you are not comfortable asking your questions about this award today, please reach out to me or Matt or Katie or um, you know uh, all of the above and we will try to get your questions answered. But please, once this survey comes out, please encourage the people in your areas to nominate deserving folks for this award. All right, so we're gonna move on to New business, I think we covered that earlier. Natalia was asking if there was somebody who wanted to be the chair of the book club. So if you uh, are interested in that, please let me or Matt or Natalia know. And are there any suggestions for new business in the last few minutes that we have? Um, Shana, this is Brad, how are you doing? I'm good, how are you? Great. Um, I actually, um, I hope it's all right to uh, mention the Digital Accessibility Office just for a second. Sure. Uh, okay, if you wouldn't mind, thank you. Um, hi, everyone. Um, if you don't know, my name is Brad Held. I am um, the, the Director for Digital Accessibility Office. And um, I just wanted to, I've already spoken to the Carolina HR Council 
uh, but I'd like to, uh, I was invited to this meeting to help out with some technical things. And so I'd like to take this quick opportunity just to remind you as we're moving to more of a digital space and we have been over the last few months is just to try to keep in mind how inclusive and important, how important it is to be inclusive to all our students. And so if there's ever any issues or concerns that you have about uh, digital technology and whether or not it's accessible to someone, please keep in mind that our office is always there to help and answer questions. Sometimes the consulting involves just helping you figure out exactly what you don't know, and uh, that is fine. Um, but just keep in mind that our office is a resource for um, our employees and our students to make sure that we're trying to be as inclusive as possible. And I'll put my contact information in the chat. Great, thank you. And I do wanna shout out to Brad. He has spent the last two days with uh, me and Matt and Phil trying to figure out um, you know, the closed captioning, that piece and the live streaming. And a, a big thank you. Uh, it, I, I cannot say how grateful I am for you helping us with that process. So um, do reach out to Brad's team if you have questions. He's pretty amazing. Any other closing business? Okay, well, with that, is there a motion to adjourn? Hey, Shana, um, I just had a quick question. Matt sent us two different resolutions in the Yes, message. so, I, I, and I mentioned that um, we're gonna hold off on the second resolution because we received a response from the chancellor last night. And so I do think it would be a good idea to move forward with the resolution, but we should probably include the response. So we will relook at that and probably talk about that at the next meeting. Follow-up question, and maybe sure. I missed this when I was out. Do you plan on sharing that response with yes. executive committee or everyone? Yep. Cool. Yep, uh, it, it came to me late, late last night. So I promise you I will get that out so that so that the process is transparent. Thank you, Shana. No problem. Any other questions? No other questions. Just want to say thank you and you did a great job. And thank you. Everybody did an amazing job. Thank you so very much. This is uh, more challenges <laughs> every day. So thank you to the team for making it all happen. And I'm going to um, ask if there is a motion to adjourn. I move to adjourn, Shana. Is there anybody opposed to adjourning? I'm okay. opposed to you getting teary-eyed right now. Stop it. <laughs> She's always crying. It's all right. I know, right? <laughs> it's, it's, it's okay. I'm a huge baby. I, I, it will never change. I'm in we love you. 50s and still crying. All right. Thank you, everybody. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. Bye. And if you want to put the um the slide at the end real quick, and yep. we'll... perfect. And Matthew, on your side, if you will look for the slide to show up in the screen at that point. It's, it's, it's all right to go ahead and um, in your stream um, right now, because it's been up for just a minute. So, uh, uh, Shana, if you want to actually just go up to the top left-hand corner where it says live on custom streaming and just go to in stream. And you can go ahead and stop recording. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop recording from the YouTube studio. Uh, not not yet. Um, go okay, ahead. Very good. Go ahead and let uh, Shana, if you want to actually go ahead and uh, 